guys, welcome to my studio. It's Dwight with Dwight Pours. How are you doing today? So today I'm gonna to be working on a large canvas. I have a 30 by 40 canvas. I'm going to do a dump and swirl. And so I'm gonna be preparing about 55, 56 ounces of paint to make sure I cover the canvas, including tilting. Um, since it's a level three canvas, I've got the thick sides, so I'm gonna need a little extra paint. So um, I'm going to mix up my paints in a few minutes. I'm going to show you the paints and the colors before I actually do the pour. But I want to show you something I found today. I was excited. I found Artist Loft um, Black Acrylic Flow Paint, not the soft body paint. So I'm going to be using this today to see if I actually notice a difference because all of my recent paintings over the past couple of months um, have been with the soft body paints when they stopped making the acrylic flow. So I found that at Michael's today. I heard they might be um, making more and going back to the old formula. So we'll see, I'll see how that goes. Um, something else I wanna talk about too is I get a couple of questions about mixing my paints and formulas and things like that. So years ago, I used to be very, very strict in terms of my measuring of my um, paints. And I used to use a little measuring cup. This is a two ounce cup. I would get it off of Am Amazon and I would measure everything to a T. So as you see in my notes, it usually says one part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium, and then water to thin. So I, would use, I used to use these. Nowadays, I just eyeball it. I'm just, you know, to me, a formula or my formula is more of a suggestion. It's a guide. It gives you an idea of how to sort of proportion the paints and the pouring mediums when you mix them. Um, I don't think it has to be so accurate. I don't think it makes a difference. That's just my perspective. I know there are some pours where it is important to make sure that you have everything appropriate, like maybe Bloom pours and some of these other ones that I have not personally tried at this point. So I'm just letting you know that when you ask me for the specifics, it's a suggestion, um, it's a guide, and it gives you an idea just sort of how to um, you know, mix your paints together. So hopefully that makes some sense and it, it works for you. Sometimes I use a lot of Floetrol, and sometimes I don't use as much because I don't have a lot, and so I might do equal parts. It just depends on where I am with my paints and the kind of pour that I'm doing. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about too is um, the dump paints. Now my dump paint is usually mixed the same way, okay? So it's usually mixed one to two part, one part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, a drizzle, Liquitex, pour in medium water. Even though I'm using a bigger volume, I'm still using it about the same way. Occasionally, it may be four parts flow trawl or one part paint. Again, it just varies. Another thing to keep in mind is that flow trawl, it's a paint conditioner. It's not necessarily a pouring medium. Um, it allows you to use more paint. So if I use one ounce of paint and I put two or three ounces of flow trawl, I have four ounces of paint that I can use, if that makes sense. Um, and so Liquitex, Pouring medium is a binder. Again, with stretching and adding water, you need a binder to make sure the pigments don't um, fade out or fragment or it gets all kind of hazy when, it's, when it starts to dry. Um, let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Well, I don't think I can remember that at the moment. Um, it has to do with the mixing and the pouring. Oh, one more thing, yes. One of my subscribers, and if you see this, I apologize, I don't remember your name. We exchanged some messages about um, doing this dump and swirl. And she said she did, had a successful pour, and she said, basically, it's all about thinning the paints. You know, thinning the paints is what makes it happen. So that's the cue. I always say, please, please, please make sure your paints are thin, almost like water. So when you drizzle it, it goes in, it doesn't mound, and it doesn't sink. That's about the best I can do. As long as everything is the same consistency, you might have, a, you probably will, or you might have a successful pour. Okay, guys, I'm rambling here. Let me mix my paints. I'll show you the colors mixed up, and then we'll get started. Okay, take care. We'll see you in a second. Okay, guys, I'm back. Here we are looking at the color scheme that I'm using today. So I added a little extra. I have a little four ounce cup there on the far left, and I'm going to be going for about 36 ounces of paint. Um, I want to make sure I cover the canvas and don't overstretch things, but I want to make sure that I don't have too much on the canvas. So we'll see how this goes. So first I'll let you know, this is the soft body. See, I call it soft body. This is the Acrylic Flow Artist Loft Black, and that's going to be my dump paint. I have a little extra over here I might put on the corners just to make sure I have enough and I don't overstretch things. So this color here is teal, 
and it's by Craft Smart. Um, so I'm going to throw that somewhere in the middle, maybe have some highlights of that color within the pore. And then this is the Deco Arts uh, Dazzling Metallics White Pearl. Oops, it's not quite clear there. There we go. And then next to that is the Folk Art Metallics, and that is Sapphire Blue. And then I have um, Deco Arts Metallics Amethyst. So that's what it looks like. And then last but not least, I have Champagne, which is a color I like and I haven't used in a while. I used it on the last painting, um, which turned out really nice. Um, but here we are, this is Folk Art Metallics um, Champagne. So here's my canvas. I am going to um, prep it in just a second here, and make sure everything's level, and then we'll get started. So we'll see you in a second. Okay guys, I'm back. So listen, please don't be upset with me, but I'm gonna scrape this canvas and start over, and I'll tell you why. There are a couple areas um, that I have some problems with. One is this corner. Um, I'm not into going into embellishments. Um, I usually am not very good about that, just highlighting some of the imperfections I'm good at. So let me walk over here. And I had a lot of problems down with this corner down here. I have all this cloudiness, which I do not like. I drip some paint here. I drip some paint there. I drip some paint there. Um, and then I have this area right in here that's just a mess. It's not very defined. And um, yeah, so my fingers are crossed that I'm going to be able to create something a little bit better. I like the composition. Um, the problem is I don't have purple. So I went back in and mixed some extra teal. I'm gonna scrape this, work at drawing the canvas, and do it over again. Again, please forgive me, and you will see, um, hopefully in my mind, a better result in a few minutes. Thank you.
Okay, guys, I'm back for the final walkthrough. And wow. So this is more of what I was going for, but with the purple. I love this pour. It's got some great movement, as you can see, sort of the wispiness going into the negative space. Um, yeah, the colors worked really well together. Um, this was um, Artist Loft Acrylic Flow Black. So I'm not sure if I noticed much of a difference, but um, I'm still happy with the results. Uh, what I do notice is it's a little bit creamier, I think, than the soft body paints. So let me move in to show you some of the details. There's a lot of detail. Um, you can see such a matrix on this. Got some of the white through here, the blue and the teal, and the lovely light coming in the window. Light on this end here. I love that. So when I look at this and look at touch-ups, let me move in here again. Um, there's just a few areas, you know, just through here that I might touch up. Um, some of these cells are awesome. I may just color them just slightly, the color that's already there, just to make them look a little bit bigger and stand out. Some of these cells right in here, I'll probably highlight as well because I want to have some, you know, definition and some interest in the negative space. So I'll just kind of clean up right through here when I go in after this dries. It's already starting to dry. If you can see the edge there, it's, you can see part like the canvas. So it's starting to dry. So yeah, guys, I'm really happy with this. Um, this is what I'm going for in these type of pours. I want there to be, um, just look at all the interest in there. I want it to look um, almost like a watercolor, if that makes sense. And so I think I accomplished that today. And this is a 30 by 40, it's a large canvas. So I know I scraped the first one, I apologize. Um, I won't show that pour just because, yeah, there's really no need to, but I wanted to show you why I wanted to scrape it. Um, this has more interest to me than even the composition of the other one. And I think when it dries, it's gonna dry, the colors are really gonna pop. I think the blues and then the teal kind of wraps around up through here. So Dwight's happy. I hope you are too. Have a great start to the weekend and we'll see you soon.